welcome to the Yume Experience 2021. I am so glad to see you. Well, you probably can't, you can see me, but I can't see you. But welcome to the virtual event here at Yume Lake. We're up at Joshua Building. I'm John Bold, the Chief Development Officer here at Yume, and we are so excited that you are here with us tonight. Man, has it been a year. We can't wait to see you again face to face. But until then, I was reminded as we were thinking about preparing for this evening, it's a heart for you. That's our theme. You know, it really begins with God's heart for us. For God so loved the world that he gave us his son. What a privilege we have and hold that God loved us and generously gave his son to us. But as we begin tonight, I want to focus on our mission, the heart of our mission. We're going to hear from the past the present, and the future of where the heart of this mission is going. But I think it would be important for me to spend just a few minutes to say thank you at the very beginning. Twelve months ago, when we realized camp was not going to open in the spring, and then summer got canceled, we sat down, the board of directors, the staff, the team, and really figured out we were going to need $6 million dollars. And God stepped in in amazing ways. In fact, that Yum Relief Fund, really for us, we took all the resources we could find. We, we, we had to furlough staff and lay some folks off. We made significant budget cuts. We used a million dollars of our reserves. And there was a time when we wondered, God, what are you doing? Are we going to survive this? And he did thanks to you. In fact, not only did he supply the six, he gave us $7.75 million because he knew what we didn't. He knew it wasn't a two-week to flatten the curve or two months to flatten the curve. He knew fall would be impacted, winter would be impacted, spring would be impacted, and we were praying now for summer 2021. And I know that's what you want to know right now. Well, not quite. You'll get to hear what's happening in summer 2021 before we're done. But I just want to say again, thank you with the heart of thanksgiving. Because that heart is what has kept us alive to this point with God's gracious help. Thank you. Tonight, as we look at the past, present, and future, we have some folks ready to chat with you. If you have a question along the night, the evening as we go, or perhaps what we've learned in the last six, seven months is that there's some hurting folks. Their lives have been turned upside down and they just would like someone to pray with them. So tonight we've established the Yume Lake prayer line, 559-305-7790. A team is ready to pray with you to take your cares before God Almighty, who has a listening ear. Also joining me tonight, as you can see behind me, is the Yume development team. Normally, we're sitting together at the table, having a pazuki, talking about what God's done last summer, what he's going to do this summer. But instead of being with you tonight, they're here. And they're available to chat with, as you can see behind me on the telephone, at 559-305-7780. Zero. Feel free to give them a call anytime tonight. They'll be glad to take a call from you as we move forward through the evening. But you're not here to talk and hear me talk on camera all night long, nor do I want that. So I'd much rather you see campers. So let's look at a camper experience.
was in June of 1945, the year before the beginning of Hume. I was an attendee at a Christian Endeavor conference at Whitaker Forest. And I had spent a week there and my parents came up to pick me up and they had heard that uh, these men were going to possibly uh, look at Hume Lake as a potential camp facility. So we drove in that June day from Whitaker Forest to Hume Lake, my first time I ever saw it. It was still a liquor resort, but the beauty was all here. There were a, a number of people other than the five that we speak about, but they were the prime movers. I knew them uh, from other organizations in the Fresno area uh, as a teenager. I think I wanted to be like them. I liked the way they lived. They were men of God. And that's what I believe drove them to fill the passion they had to have a camp that would be able to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the valley. They had one thing in mind. That was that young people would come to know Jesus. And uh, they were adamant about it. And that's not just because they were starting a camp. That's the way they lived. They never wavered. The gospel was number one. From the very beginning, and fortunately, and praise God, and I believe because of heavy prayer in this area, the desire of the board of directors has been from the beginning, it was before I was on the board, and it will be whenever I leave the board completely, that methods may change, but the message never changes. There is a stability here that many or organizations, Christian organizations, may have forgotten along the way. And uh, it's my prayer uh, that Hume Lake Christian Camps never drifts from its founding father's desire. And I believe that will be known to be true. Hello and welcome to Wagon Train. This is the most exciting camp at Hume Lake. This camp was designed and built in 1964. It uh, came about because we had a strong desire to reach more young people for Jesus Christ. And how could we do that? Well, we came and found this piece of property. We built the covered wagons on the property here, and then we begin to hold camping. The kids can play in the woods, they can shoot bows and arrows. They can swim in the swimming pool. They get to play in these covered wagons. But more than that, they get to know Jesus Christ as their own personal savior. At Victory Circle, this is a place where we would present the gospel. And we decided, how are we going to present it? What are we going to present? There's many things you can talk about from the word of God. And we decided the thing that would be most foundational for these young people and would carry them on into their adult years is to teach them doctrine. It is here that we taught them the doctrine of prayer, the doctrine of the second coming of Christ. We taught them about the importance of going to church and the fellowship with other believers. We taught them about the battle that they have between the old nature and the new nature. We taught them that truth of Jesus Christ as God in a human body. Doctrine is the thing that gives you a person a firm foundation that will carry them through all types of problems through life. And one of the important doctrines is the doctrine of the sovereignty of God. God is in control. God is not caught off guard by anything that happens to you. And if you can teach that one truth to people, it will help them weather all kinds of problems and storms the rest of their life. In the summer of 1969, 
we had a devastation that scared us to death. It was a fire. And the fire started back in the woods beyond wagon train. And it was starting to sweep this direction, coming towards the camp. The fire gained speed when it became a crown fire. It was leaping through the tops of the trees. We evacuated wagon train camp. We evacuated Meadow Ranch camp. We evacuated Ponderosa camp and all the kids were gathered down by the lake. Smoke was thick down there. The rangers were in here. We had a uh, hundred of our staff fighting the fire. We had 400 firefighters in here fighting the fire. And we were afraid we were going to lose Hume Lake. While the young people and all the adults were down at the lake, our, our firefighters were right in the woods fighting the fire. The wind was blowing from where we are at Wagon Train towards the lake. That's the way the wind blows uh, during the summertime. And the flag was uh, blowing that direction. And we knew that the fire was going to sweep down through the grounds. And then all of a sudden, the flag stopped waving and stopped and settled and then blew the exact opposite direction. Even the ranger said, that's a miracle. The wind doesn't go that direction. It must have been God that changed the, the, the direction of the wind, and it was. It was God's hand over Hume. This property is not ours. This property is his. And he continues to bless this property that's been dedicated to the glory of God. And we're very grateful to him for that and thankful that he saved Hume Lake from that terrible devastation of the fire in 1969. Thanks, John. Thanks, Bob, for that great reminder of God's faithfulness. Wow, that really is at the heart of our, miss our mission. That each person that encounters this global ministry will read their scriptures and understand the Bible. That they'll grow in their faith, find a local church to engage with, and then serve Jesus Christ wherever he calls them to be. I hope tonight as you got the box in the mail if you're hosting a party or, or got the letter in the mail, the envelope, you received the secret you lake pazuki recipe. You want to make sure you take check that out. The secret's soft butter. Also in that was one of the stickers. There's a series of nine. You can pick up any one of those stickers anytime at the development office at Hume Lake Christian Camps. I also want to invite you to Hume, New England, October 4 to 7. We're going to spend three days with John Soblowski and his wife Lisa there at Hume, New England. A beautiful time of year to be there. I want to invite you to be there October 4 through 7. Check out the website to register for that event. But let's get back to campers and their experience here at U. I'm joined here this evening by three of the 15 Hume Lake Christian Camp board members. Guys, thanks for being here tonight. I'm so excited to have you here. I'm joined with uh, Rick Parkinson, who's chairman of the board, Tom Cornford, who is a board member, and uh, Greg Smith, who's chairman of our finance committee. Guys, welcome. I'm glad you took some time out tonight to be with us and to share your hearts and thoughts with us as we look at, from the board's chair and mm -hmm. perspective, How's the last year been? So let me just jump right into the first question and make that the first question. That was, you know, May 2020, and we're looking at summer of 2020. What was going on at the board level? Interesting time. You know, we started out in March, like most people, thinking we were looking at a two-week, let's flatten the curve. Thought we had an event in our life that we were going to have to deal with. And by uh, May, it had become a journey. Hmm. 
and uh, we were faced with uh, canceling multiple camps over the springtime that were just heartbreaking to us. And now we're looking towards summer. And yet even then, even in late May, I, I recall that we were fighting to have camp. We were desperate to find a way forward to have kids come to camp and uh, trusting that God would provide a way. And then the decision was made. We weren't going to have traditional summer camp at Yuma Lake. What was the emotion that you were feeling in that moment? I think just sadness and and grief over those campers who wouldn't come and hear the gospel. We're stewards of this ministry. It's our responsibility to manage well and just praying for wisdom, constantly trying to understand what would God have us do. We had to also not only try and see what ministry we could do and what camp we could do, also what costs could we cut? How could we be great stewards of what God had given us financially and where what what difficult decisions did we have to make and how can we um, renew hope with a new vision of what we could do with what we were given and so um, we had to go out in the backyard dig up those tin cans and uh, find those spots of financial reserves that we had and really look look at everything we had donors we had volunteers step up and come alongside like we've never seen before that would come up on the on the weeks during the summer and we would we were trying to do different things we increased our board meetings where we began meeting at least monthly oftentimes twice a month uh, talking about plans forward paths forward and it was a week to week month to month journey for us tom what, as a former staff member mm -hmm. what were your thoughts as how would this impact staff for me personally it was a powerful moment to know that this ministry of 70 years and these staff members that have been called to be a part of this ministry to see lives changed, we're gonna to have to look to see what is God doing in the midst of this storm. For me personally, it was that whole idea of how is God gonna use this in a way and encourage our staff and not lose focus about what the drive is and that's just win young people to Christ. Share with us what were your thoughts about what the fallout would be and now 11 months later, what's the reality? My, my first thought was, you know, can we make it through this financially? And then to see God work through that process and the great abundance of provision uh, that God has provided. And uh, it's time of, that's something I'm really thankful for. And it's been a great faith lesson for me. I think the fallout was also just devastating to see and come to the realization that, you know, Nearly 20,000 young people couldn't, mm -hmm. didn't come to camp last summer. That is, that is just heartbreaking to us and something that we take very seriously. And you know, as quickly as we move towards, through, towards summer and through summer, we were anticipating, okay, can we do it in the winter? And here we sit, you know, winter of 2021, uh, looking forward to what God's going to do this summer. Tom, we hear all the time mm -hmm. uh, so much in the news about teenagers mm -hmm. and what they're going through in this quarantine process. Yeah. As a high school counselor, give us your perspective on what's happening mm -hmm. at, at the grassroots, at the ground level, and why then is camp so important to them? So as a high school counselor, watching kids with anxiety, isolation, a need for friendships and fun, Camp is all of those things that we would say in the positive. It's interaction with your brothers. It's finding those Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego friends that help mm -hmm. us get through fires and hardship and will stand against a culture that goes opposite to what you believe. But you find that friend that, where do you find a lot of times? It's at camp. Or you find that relationship, and you may be a Daniel, that your friend is God, and he helps sustain you. And so the reality is, is that this generation camp is continues to be and for 70 plus years humans been it where kids find that relationship with god and a hope and a place where you can come and get away from the worries of the world and see that there's a god but there's also a group of believers that also believe in that same hope and truth and these become their eternal friends and so to think in those terms to not have camp this summer was very hard for me because I know this generation mm -hmm. desperately needs camp and needs to know that hope that we have, but we want to continue the next generation. One of the things I've learned recently about the history of Yuma Lake was that summer staffers used to set up what they call Ebenezer's around camp mm -hmm. to remind those moments of God worked here and now. Mm -hmm. Share with us one Ebenezer moment from this last 10 months 
from your perspective as a board member? Mm, for me, I mean, the financial journey looked to be a daunting task that only God could do. And John, as you shared the results of what our uh, ministry partners did and churches, churches stepped up in a huge way. Mm. Thousands of new donors and, and friends of Hume stepped up this last year as we moved through our fiscal year end in the fall and, and into the end, year end, that was a moment, a very humbling moment for me. My Ebenezer was to see our staff and their resolve that they would put together a virtual camp. And I just thought, well, this ministry is going to continue to share that hope and that gospel and not let it just be a year where we don't minister. That was pretty exciting. Seeing ministry still happen, relationships with donors and friends of Hume, uh, in addition to the financial, I mean, mm. you know, that's, that's just hard to look past, but um, I think it's still ministry happening. Well, it's, it's March 23rd, and while everyone's tuned in tonight, really the reason is mm. summer 2021. So let's put it on the table. What are you guys as board members doing and anticipating the next 80 days being as we look to summer 2021. We're on our knees. We are praying. Our, our staff is, is making incredible plans. We care about the health and safety of every person that comes on our campus. So certainly that is a huge effort, but we care about the heart and the mm -hmm. soul of yeah. everyone that comes on this camp. And so we're committed to prayer. Our board has started uh, most recently, praying through Thursdays. I'd invite you to join us from the break of dawn till mm -hmm. the late in the evening. Every hour is covered by board members and others praying that God would give us wisdom and mm -hmm. provide a path forward. So that's where we're standing right now. We're committed to being open to the fullest extent possible this summer. And that means young people, youth, little kids, middle schoolers, high schoolers, we're about youth and we want to see them on our campus this summer. I'm anticipating he's going to do something we can't even believe mm. is possible. I'm anticipating he's going to move again. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I know he's going to be present. And I think he wants us to be present. He needs us to be willing to be in prayer, mm -hmm. to be willing to be humble. Sometimes mm -hmm. we as a ministry can be pretty proud of what we've accomplished and mm. seeing him do through us when the reality is sometimes we need to be still and know that he is God and watch him work. And that doesn't mean we're just being still. There's a lot happening. The staff is working hard to get ready. The theme is going to be incredible, but I'm anticipating that he will move as he has planned. Let me personally say on behalf of the staff, my department, the entire U ministry partners, thank you for your work, uh, your time, the energy you put into this place, no one knows or sees the hours behind the scenes, the, the time your wives give up for you to invest in this place. Share a final thought with us before we close out our time together. Well, first of all, thank you. Thank you for your journeying with us this past year. We are so grateful uh, for you, our ministry partners, for the thousands that have journeyed with us. For me, this journey started 50 years ago. This will be mm. fourth generation and Lord willing, as I look forward to camp this year, it will be my grandchildren that will be in Wagon Train. I met Christ here. I was at Wagon Train when Bobby Phillips was Wagon Master, driving around in an old Jeep. Hmm. Still here, and Hume has been an incredible impact on our family. We want to have impact on young people. We want young people to come to Christ, and we are committed to getting open to the fullest extent possible for young people. That hmm. means my grandchildren at Wagon Train, your young people, middle schoolers, mm. high schools. We want mm. to hear the noise. We want to have some fun. Mm -hmm. And we want to share the gospel. I'm blessed to be able to work and serve with these guys, but to serve with you as donors for a ministry that's impacted my family personally. I think about each one of my kids. I think about my future grandkids and this ministry and how it impacts those generations that I encounter offside of this place that are excited about Hume. And so I'm thankful that you continue to partner with us, and that we get to partner with you, and it's just a blessing. I, I just want to say thank you for your prayers, for your gifts, for your support. And it's, it is an encouraging, humbling thing hmm. 
to, to be involved at a place that you know has such impact, either in my, my example, my own life, but also friends and family and other people that I meet over time. So thank you for your involvement in this ministry. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Each summer, we take a creative theme and use it to illuminate scripture to address issues students are dealing with in their everyday life. The theme process is interesting. We spend the entire summer looking at where culture is. In the summer, we started meeting together and praying and kind of discussing what, what are topics that we've heard. And our whole goal uh, for the following two weeks is to figure out what is our theme for the following summer, for this summer. And so what we did is uh, we pulled all of the comments, all of the input from our youth pastors and kind of narrowed it down to a few key things that students were dealing with. So what we do after that is after we figure out where it is we're headed spiritually in the concept. And we lock ourselves in this cabin and we, we dive into God's word. Then once we feel like spiritually we're in exactly where we want to be every day, we begin to look at how are we going to tell the story. He's revealed himself to us plainly that we might obey and have life. Well, I hope you caught a glimpse of maybe the answer for summer 2021 in that video. Maybe go back and rewatch it and see what you learned. The mission statement, as you just heard, is being lived out by those three men and every other board member that serves here. They're businessmen whose lives were impacted here at Yume Lake Christian Camps. And now they're giving back by serving here and serving others. I want to remind you that the team, the development team, still behind me waiting for your call. Perhaps you have an estate planning question. David Harrison's waiting to hear from you. You can talk to him at 559-305-7780 or a prayer request can still be shared up until 9 p.m. tonight, both development and prayer. The prayer line is 559 559- 305-7790. Let's hear from our CEO, Dathan Brown. This year has been a difficult year. It's just been filled with uh, decisions and challenges and then pivoting and, and the goalposts being changed. And one of the most challenging days, I think, was Friday, June the 11th. The very fact that I remember that date just shows that it's a date that sticks in my mind. I remember waking up early that morning and reading that Disneyland was planning to reopen and people were excited about that. Hume Lake Campgrounds and Princess were open. It was a Friday, people were coming up to the lake, just general public. And we had some of Hume Faithful that were staying up in the subdivision. We had been closed for months at this point. I remember welcoming uh, some guest uh, as in the general store and seeing a friend of mine and uh, knowing that uh, we had just received guidance finally that we would not be allowed to, to operate large-scale summer camps uh, in the summer of 2020. And knowing that we were going to have to let hundreds of summer staffers know that they wouldn't have a job knowing that HR was going to meet that day with all of our, our full-time staff at Hume to let them know if they were going to be furloughed or permanently laid off. It was just uh, so many inputs for, and it's like, didn't fully make sense. Like, how can this happen, but not this? And it was just wild and trying to be welcoming to people that I, that I saw and was excited to welcome to Hume at the same time trying to care and to be um, compassionate for those who maybe just lost their job. And uh, it was a tough day. Um, it was probably one of the toughest days in a long time at Hume Lake. The hardest things, I think, was the silence. Was to walk through empty Ponderosa Chapel or Meadow Ranch and to know that Hume, New England was closed and mothballed. And to know that SoCal, a camp that we had just, just begun to lease and we were so excited about was not operating. That silence was deafening because we exist to partner with churches to shine bright the gospel. And to not have that was difficult. 
in leadership have an, an amazing uh, responsibility. You know, it's, it's kind of a healthy tension to do the best we can to set Hume up to still exist in the future, to make tough financial decisions, which involved downsizing our staff, furloughing, and also uh, long, I mean, permanent layoffs. Uh, not easy at all. But we have a responsibility, as does the board, to uh, make some of those tough decisions so that we can exist. Um, and yet at the same time, uh, we love our staff. I'm a pastor. I come from pastoral ministry. I care for people. And if someone loses their job at Hume, they don't just lose their job. Ultimately, they lose their house. They lose their school. They lose their church. They lose their community. And then they step out into a very difficult situation. And so in that season, it was very challenging to live both of those tensions in a way that honored God and valued people. I found myself often going up to the Joshua building and I would just uh, sit in front of the windows with a beautiful view in front. I would just find myself praying and asking God for wisdom to know what to do. Protect us, provide for us. Uh, the goalposts are changing so much. Lord, help us to, even in things that we can't see coming, protect us from what we don't know. Provide for us a path forward. I know so many others have spent time at Joshua who have sat in the very seats I sat in and just saying, Lord, what is it that you have for my life or for this situation? And I found myself this year doing a fair amount of that. You know, I've been at Hume now uh, going on eight years. During that time, we faced uh, one of the largest forest fires in California history in 2015 and then uh, just an epic drought. And, and, and now a global pandemic. We rely on the Lord at Hume for snow to fall, for rain to come, to fill the lakes, to give us water to even operate. I don't think we're any more dependent on the Lord than anybody else is. We though, like farmers, we have a chance to see it firsthand. Facing a global pandemic and just not being able to have large scale summer or winter camp and just the hopelessness that so many have around our world. It just makes me more committed and more just focused because we need to do camp. My desire, at least in my mind, this logo right here is, is kind of like when you pick up a rock and you go out to the lake early in the morning and it's like glass. The steam's rising off it and you throw a rock and it breaks the surface and then radiating out from that center are ripples. And that's what I think camp is. There's a point of impact at camp that doesn't end with camp. It ripples year after year and decade after decade. And my desire and our prayer is that it'll ripple over the banks of Hume Lake and around the world to change this world for the gospel. Some of you have called yourselves Christians your entire life, but you've never actually looked to Jesus through his word to tell you how you should live your life. I was a believer in God, but now I'm choosing to follow him. I would just say my goal is to be the man of God that I've always wanted to be. I don't think you can respond to the gospel with anything but your entire heart. There's nothing that we can do to separate us from God's love. I just stood up finally, and just tears just started rolling down my face. Just, I never cried like that in my life, and that's at that point, like I really knew that like, God's like real. There's never something so terrible that you can do that the God of the universe can't come along, take your sin, put it on Jesus, and give you the righteousness that Jesus earned. There's nothing that you can ever do to earn it.
So I grew up here in Clovis. In fact, went to elementary school just down the street. And my parents divorced when I was very, very young. So I grew up just with my dad. And I'm not sure if it was partly because dad wanted a week without me driving him crazy, or if he wanted me to have some positive godly influences. As an unchurched family, my dad found a church here in Fresno that went to Hume and put me on the bus to go to wagon train. I remember we stayed in the Connecticut cabin and I can remember some of the crazy songs and crazy games. And as a kid who had no church experience whatsoever, I remember hearing about the love of Christ. And though I didn't trust Christ while I was at Wagon Train, those seeds were planted. Fast forward to my college years, come to the end of myself, struggling with my own sin, turned to Christ in college and began to walk out the gospel in my life. And little did I know that God would lead me down a road that would now make me an elder and a lead pastor of a church here in Fresno that has been in partnership with Hume Lake as a communicator for 20 years. And so when COVID hit here a little over a year ago, we all kind of wondered how ministries were gonna survive, especially a ministry like Hume that really counted on hundreds and hundreds of students coming into one building at one time. How would the COVID restrictions affect Hume? And so we invited you as those in the body to just be generous and to give and, and to say, hey, can we invest in a ministry that's had such a long and rich history impacting kids like me and many others? Can we invest generously in hopes that it can survive? Because early on, we weren't even sure if it would even survive this crisis. And it's interesting, scripture reminds us that God is a God who is a generous God, who does exceedingly abundantly beyond all we can ask or imagine. And we invited you to give and we set a very lofty goal and sure enough, God provided through your generosity above and beyond anything that we could have ever imagined. So we just wanna say thank you for your generosity. And as an elder and a lead pastor, I wanna also say thank you to Hume for the partnership that we experience with the local church. Hume is not a church, has never claimed to be, but Hume's partnership with the local church is incredible because when young men and women like me come up to camp, maybe disconnect from a church, have a moment, an experience with God, where they trust in Jesus Christ, that connection to a local church is so beautiful. And I'm so thankful that we send our youth groups up there. I'm so thankful that our college students serve on summer staff. I'm so thankful for the partnership with Hume Lake and for God's grace to bring Hume through this difficult season. And I, I'm mindful that as historic as the legacy has been for Hume, the best days are yet to come because of you and what God has done through you to give to keep this ministry flourishing. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you for the partnership with the local church and thank you for the ministry of Hume Lake. God bless. Last week, the Hume Lake Christian Camp's Board of Directors made a decision to open traditional youth camps to the fullest extent possible. Therefore, staff is diligently working to make preparations to open Ponderosa Camp, Wagon Train, Meadow Ranch, Wildwood, the Hume Teaching Series, Summer Sundays, and the Hume Ministry Partner Weekends here at Hume Lake. Also out in New England, we're working diligently to open camp there to the fullest extent possible. And for the, for the first time ever, we're planning to have uh, programmed camps at our brand new Hume SoCal facility between Big Bear and Lake Arrowhead. In order to open this summer, we're going to have to make a number of modifications to our standard operating procedures. You know, at Hume, we always value safety. And this year, we may have to eat outside and meet outside, which means we're going to have to create and invest some dollars to create outdoor meeting spaces or to upgrade current Victory Circles. We're going to have a number of other projects, including adding additional staff in order to help keep the camp as safe as possible and to uh, put through the protocols that are needed during this COVID time frame. Tonight, we look into the future. Our Hume Fund goal is $3.5 million. You know, the Hume Fund, that's unrestricted gifts that help move the ministry of Hume forward. And this year, we're going to do a number of projects 
Projects like replacing our snowplow, which due to EPA guidelines, we're going to have to purchase a, a used snowplow uh, because we're having to remove some of the uh, uh, diesel equipment due to the guidelines that, that we're facing here in California. In addition to that project and a bunch of others, we are going to be focused on camperships. You know, there's a lot of students who simply will not be able to afford camp this year, and we need to help them. In addition to all of the normal Hume Fund projects, this year we're going to focus approximately a million and a half dollars to help reopen camp. You know, tonight I'd like to ask you to make a donation to the Hume Fund to help Hume reopen this summer and to help us to continue to shine bright the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hey, John Bull, come on and tell us how people can give to the Hume Fund. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dathan. Can I do a happy dance? Summer 2021, what an exciting time. Let me, let me turn my attention back to how can you help that three and a half million dollars. There's three ways uh, that you can help give. In your envelope, there was the reply device, which is the standard usual dinner reply device. You can fill that out, drop it in the envelope, and we'll get it at the Fresno Business Office. But I also want you to know that that $1.5 million is about outdoor seating in Victory Circles. About half of those dollars will be spent there. The other half will be spent on air filtration systems, the things that make you safe for campers again. And we can't wait. You also have a couple other options. You can go online and give. The website's available. It's up now. You can also call one of the development team behind me. They'd be glad to chat with you if you have questions about what is the reopening piece of the UM Fund or what about the UM Fund, things that we're going to do. You know, we need to rebuild staff, particularly summer staff this year. We need, if you know a college student or have a, a grandson, granddaughter who is looking for work this summer, have them jump online and apply to come back to work at Hume Lake Christian Camps. I can't tell you how excited we are to reopen this summer. What an answer to prayer. I want to thank many of our sponsors who made tonight, of, to my, tonight possible. I want to thank Fresno Lexus, The Weed Man, Classic Woodcraft, and the Prickett family. Thank you for helping us put this night together. Thank you for attending our time tonight at the first ever virtual Yuma experience, Lord willing, the last virtual experience. And we look forward to seeing you, or as Kenny Poor used to say, we'll see you here, there, or in the air. Good night. <laughs>